My God. This guy knows no shame. I only have two possible explanations for this. A complete lack of comprehension or pure measurement manipulation. First of all, the Edematic ER2SC does not even target diffuse field. As I briefly explained in another video, for a Dolby certified reference room, the red line represents the equivalent of the diffuse field. In order for the sound of an earphone to be the same at the eardrum as it is in a Dolby reference room, the drum reference point measurement of the earphone should be within margin of error of the black line when compensated for the flat in-room response drum reference point measurement. And as we can see, the Edematic ER2SC does exactly that. With the tasteful bass boost and a downward sloping curve starting at 2 kHz, the Edematic ER2SC easily achieves the required response for a Dolby reference room. Now, onto measurement manipulation. Critical and Banbo both use the IEC 711 coupler. Critical thinks he can get away with inserting the Edematic ER2SC shallower than it's supposed to go. Thankfully, Banbo inserts the Edematic ER2SC correctly. This can be seen with the difference in the quarter wave resonance location as I described in my Insert Deeper video. One thing I'm sure you immediately noticed is the difference in the bass response. The deeper you insert an IEM, the volume of air is reduced. This is why the sound pressure created from excursion is of higher magnitude when it reaches the eardrum. Additionally, when deeply inserting, treble extension dramatically improves. And I'm sure even if the Edematic ER2SC got an S rank in the tone grade, Critical would find some excuse in the technical grade. Slightly less detailed than the ER4. Like I mentioned earlier, such claims can only come from a lack of comprehension or manipulation. The subjective evaluation of a feeling of space can be measured by subtracting the level of direct sound from the level of diffuse sound. The pressure chamber effect works depending on how large the pressurized volume of air is. If its dimensions are smaller than the wavelength of sound, like it is for any IEM up to virtually inaudible frequencies, sound pressure is created by excursion instead of acceleration. Therefore, for IEMs, there is no diffuse sound. Imaging, or the accurate localization of instruments, is only possible with the correct frequency response. In addition, detail is also very readable from a frequency response graph. After all, forward and reverse masking principles dictate the perception of sound. For example, for a 100 Hz fundamental, at any of these dB values, the black line represents the absolute audibility threshold for a forward tone. And the black line isn't necessarily an on and off switch. Perceived detail is lost as the difference in level increases. Frequency response shows cycles per second versus loudness. Total harmonic distortion, or THD, shows the total percentage of undesired harmonics at each frequency. If THD is low, we don't need to look further. If THD is high, we can analyze individual orders to determine audibility. As the total harmonic distortion for the Edematic ER2SC is below 0.1%, we can be 100% confident that distortion is not impacting the perception of sound. Nevertheless, if we analyze the individual orders, we can see that the Edematic ER2SC is dominated by second order harmonic distortion, the least offensive form. On the other hand, the Edematic ER4SR is dominated by third order harmonic distortion, which is proven to be much more audible than second order harmonic distortion. As a result, we can conclude that the Edematic ER4SR is not more detailed than the Edematic ER2SC. Price is not a good indicator of sound quality. The only truth in this hobby is measurements. Edematic ER2SE, the best headphones in the world.